Welcome back to the Freedom Podcast. I am here with another Freedom People episode. And so for this episode, we've actually got someone from uh, Freedom Church in Raleigh. And I know this person and I thought it would be brilliant to get them on. And so Katie, welcome to the Freedom Podcast. Thank you. How are you doing? Good. I'm glad to be here. Fantastic. Um, Katie told me that this is this is her first ever podcast. So this is this is a new thing, branching out into new areas. Uh, but Katie has got an amazing story. And I thought it would be great to be able to share it with people across freedom around the world. And also for some of the things that you're involved with, Katie, because Katie, how long have you been a part of our church here in Raleigh now? This month, it's three years. Oh, look, she knows the exact time. That That's uh, heart and soul right there. Yeah. Uh, so three years you've been you've been with us. You've been with us through, I think you came in in, in the house church days. Is that That's right, it. Katie? Yep. Do you want to talk to us a little bit about your freedom journey and about when you came in and what that was like for you? Well, um, you know, COVID happened and I'd been out of church for a while because most churches completely shut down. The church I'd been in completely shut down. Um, and then during COVID, when they finally started moving toward opening again, they moved further away. And because they were further away, and I do street ministry here in Raleigh, I needed to have a local church to invite people to. Right. So um, I went online. And first i found one church that was downtown and i visited that and just wasn't the right fit for me and then i found freedom and i it looked like you were meeting in a place but it turned out that you were actually meeting in homes which actually got me excited because i always thought house church would be fun yeah so i got a call from manning and um she invited me to come to this little apartment that um a couple of the sisters lived in and yeah. it turned out to be a really small group that night and i was in the middle of having uh treat knee injections for my knee and the doctor was telling me that i had to uh fall uh do the distancing social distancing so right. i had told manning when i come i'm social distancing so the best thing happened so they're respecting that there are only, it was Dan and Manning and um, I think Nicole, I don't remember if, who else was there. Uh, the meeting was wonderful and Ben came in late. So Ben didn't know I was social distancing. And as soon as the meeting wrapped up, he shot right over and gave me a big old hug. Oh, wow. And it was so good to get a <laughs> hug after all this time, not in church and not... Being around people, it was so good. So that was the end of social distancing. That's funny. So you right. So you, he wasn't aware. He just jumped in there with a hug. Yes. He's a big friendly guy in our church. Yes. Um, but Katie, what was it as you started getting involved in freedom? I know that you you didn't just kind of think, oh, this is a nice church I can attend. Mm. You really kind of got the heart, didn't you, of the church? What was it that impacted you? What was it that made you want to stay? From the very very beginning, I saw the character. I'd never seen char such character um, of people honoring and loving each other so well. You could bring a guest in and leave them alone with, with the rest and know that they were well taken care of because the character of the people that I was seeing and meeting at Freedom Church, they knew how to love well and they knew how to honor and they knew how to take care of one another and build up one another. And it is just... I'd not really never seen anything like that in all my years in church. Oh man. Wow. I'm glad that you found that kind of family and community in our church. And it's been amazing having you a part of our church these last few years. And you're always someone who's always texting encouragement as well. You're always excited about what's happening next. And obviously when even this through this, uh, these last few years, you've seen the church go from doing house churches then to meeting in the community center, then to meeting in a construction site with all of our kind of dusty nightclub and porter johns out the front there, yeah. porter potties. And uh, and then you've seen us go through the launch. What's that been like going, almost being someone on the, on the other end of that and almost seeing it shift and change every few months and years? It's been extraordinary, especially 
uh, you know, after the years of, of building family and getting to know everybody. And then we had the launch, which I wasn't there for. I was in New York. When I came back the following Sunday, I Everything was, had changed. <laughs> who are all these people? And I still kind of feel that way. <laughs> yeah, it so is amazing. It's thrilling to see so many people come into a church where they're going to really grow, really get grounded in a sincere faith walk with God. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh and Katie, I I know a little bit because you did Academy Plus. I've got to hear some of your journey and your story, and I thought it would be great for everyone as they're getting to know you to tell a bit of your testimony because I think it's an amazing story. I do too. <laughs> Um, well, I grew up going to church, but, um, it was just a very traditional religious setting. It, there was, well, it's basically, I didn't get to really know who God was or who Jesus was in this church. Um, it was more tradition. Um, but when I got to, into my teens, I started really wondering who is Jesus? It was just this annoying thing inside of me wanting to know who he was, but I couldn't find anyone to really tell me. So I went about life and sadly went the wrong way because I didn't know him. Um, and when I got to, uh, I, was, I got married when I was 23. And from there, just went downhill, got into um, smoking marijuana every day, growing it, selling it. Um, I wound up, uh, having a, when you know, Katie, and even if you're watching this on YouTube, it, it's hard to believe, but <laughs> this was, this was Katie's life. Yeah. This is transformation. This is what God does. I was a mess. And really the reason I was getting high every day was because I was trying to find happiness mm. and it wasn't there. So um, one day I was showing my apartment and because we were getting ready to move into a house and these two women came to look at it. I didn't know at the time, but one was the pastor's, the pastor's wife of the church that this woman who was looking at the apartment was going to. And I asked her for references and somewhere along the line, one of them said the Lord when they said that. Now, I have to back up just a little. I had been, while I was pregnant with my daughter, I had been going to church, to church, to church, trying to find God, and I wasn't finding him. So this lady comes, and one of them says, the Lord, and it was like he said, here I am. It wow. was, I never heard anybody call him the Lord. So she invited me to church. I went with her. I walked in, and... um. It was different, but the presence of God was there and I knew it was God and I felt it so, so deeply, but it was different for me because they were clapping their hands. They were raising their hands. Um, they were loving me and reaching out to me. And I mean, just to hear, hear somebody say, God bless you, struck me. Wow. Um but because I was sitting there feeling so, I want what they have. I want desperately what they have, but I don't feel it. So they took me, I asked her to take me home. Thankfully, she continued to pursue me. She called me back and invited me to go again. And I went and that was it. I gave my life to Jesus at the altar. The Holy Spirit came and filled me and I was radically transformed. I immediately knew things that were in my life that had to go. Um, but from then, then it got a little tough. The trials hit because um, my husband didn't want anything to do with this God of mine. Uh, he wouldn't come to church with me. And now I have this two-year-old and uh, let's see, that was, it was in November of 79. And by January, I was pregnant and someone from his workplace that I knew called me to let me know that he was having an affair. And so now I have a two-year-old, I'm pregnant, 
And by August of that next year of 80, I was divorced. And by September, my son was born. But I will say, these were the hardest years of my life. Those I was four years on welfare as a single mom. They were the hardest years because I felt utterly abandoned. Wow. The pain of being abandoned was intense. Mm. And um, even though it was the hardest time of all, all, all my 60, almost 60, almost 70 years, um, it was the best. It really was because he had to be everything. God had to be everything. So he became my husband. He became the one I spent my evenings with. I was too poor to have a television set, set and that was probably a good thing. And there were no cell phones, <laughs> that, another good thing. So um, he was it. I spent my evenings with him. I dug into the scriptures. He taught me so much through that time. So yeah, and then four years later, he gives me a new husband and a couple wow. more kiddos. <laughs> it's amazing because you obviously made that decision and you think that, wow, life's just going to get better from here. You know, you're giving your life to Jesus. And we actually did um, a podcast last week about Joseph, you know, having this great dream yeah. and then ending up being sold into slavery and then going to prison after that. And it's that that's not the route that he had in mind. And I think even for yourself, Katie, when you're thinking of your journey, there there is not the uh that's not the invitation you want to make to people is it is that right we're going to uh you're going to give your life to jesus and then you're going to lose everything and life's going to go almost back to zero but what kept you going in those times where you know instead of being frustrated at god or being angry about the things that you did not have or the things that had been taken away instead you you found a different heart in that you found a different attitude what how did you do that i met god i remember my my ex-husband saying to me um give it up and come back be the person that i married and i couldn't i couldn't how could you possibly do that after encountering god there's there was no doubt in me that I'd encountered God. There was no doubt in me that I had get, been given a brand new life in Christ. You can't meet God and not be changed. And mm. it's, it was impossible for me to go back. Yeah. And I think there's something around clinging on, isn't there, to the goodness of God and who he is over anything else. Yeah. And Jesus said himself, you know, it's going to, you're going to have to pick up your cross to follow me yeah you're going to have to choose me over everyone else and i think that we don't always want to talk about that reality but it is the truth of following jesus and you obviously live that not just for a few months or weeks but for year after year and i it was almost like when i'm hearing your story it's like god stripped everything away to then build such a strong foundation of faith yes. within you for the rest of your life yeah so katie amazing amazing story and uh, and obviously there's been redemption and restoration in your in your life since that point but one of the things that you really have a burden for is prayer and for the lost and i would love you to just share a little bit about what you do uh, on a weekly basis as a part of a ministry where you go and you offer prayer for people in need. Do you want to just share a bit about that? Sure. Um, well, from the moment that I was born again, I wanted to tell everybody about Jesus, but I didn't always have the opportunity. But once we moved here to Raleigh, we met a man that started, He's it's a parachurch ministry that was started by lawyers and it's called courtside ministry. And he was going out in front of the courthouse and just offering to pray for people. And, you know, if the opportunity presented itself to go even further and, and lead people into a relationship with Jesus. Um, so he started it and then I, I found out about it. So I started going out there with him 
And that was it for me. That was, you know, I was thinking about it today. There were, the journey that I went on for evangelism was studying other people and the way that they did it. But I was never comfortable with the, with other people's ways. But when I found this, this, this was perfect for me because I love to pray. I, I love carrying the compassion of Jesus for people and going out there and ministering to them and praying for them. And this was the perfect way because it's a place where people going in and out of this place are desperate. They're in desperate situations yeah. or a family member is in a desperate situation. So, so just, just to give everyone a little bit of context about what courtside ministry is, and this is what, what you're involved in, Katie, is that it's at the courthouse. It's where people are going in to uh, go for trial or go for sentencing or going for minor misdemeanors. And you and uh, and usually a, maybe it's one other person or a small team are outside the front of the building. And as people are going in, maybe a bit nervous, maybe anxious, you just ask them, don't you? You kind of doorstep them and just say, hey, if they're, we're, we're Christians, if we can be praying for you, would you like us just to say a prayer before you go inside today? And uh, and so and that's as simple as it is, isn't it? It's it a, is. for people who are in need. It's people who are, you know, going and they've got to be there. They've got an appointment and it's offering a very simple thing, just that they can take their burdens and their worries and their anxieties to God in that moment. And they can do that through you praying for them. Yeah. Yeah. And it really is that easy because I mean, people are so receptive to someone stepping up and caring about them and caring about the situation they're in enough to stand with them in prayer. Um, it's, it's really for me, like God's playground <laughs> because yeah, right. it's so much fun. It, it's such a joy to be able to have a, a crying mother on your shoulder because she's distraught over her son or daughter or giving hope to somebody that doesn't know if they're coming back out or not, mm. or encouraging somebody that's been in relationship with Jesus, but they don't go to church. They haven't in a long time. And we meet a lot of people like that. So um, we, we get to encourage a lot of people. And we some of the people, I'm surprised that they say yes to us. Um, right. I find uh, that Muslims, are always saying yes. They have no hesitance wow. to say yes to us. Um, we've had gay couples stop. They're not hesitant to have us pray. Um, we've had, uh, let's see. Oh, we pray for the police officers going in and out of there. And it's it's been fun because we've established relationships with some of the police officers and some of the lawyers that go in and out of there. And some of the security people. Wow. Yeah. And so, Katie, why don't you share us a few stories, a few, few specific examples of how you've got to do this and how God's used it and some, some kind of um, almost individual moments. All right. Well, I remember there was one lady that um, I approached her. I asked her if there was anything I could pray for her. And she said, no, I'm not a spiritual person. And I said, well, that doesn't matter. I could still pray blessing over you. And she, so she said, yes, but then she wound up unloading a whole bunch of stuff that was going on in her life. And I was able to really pray for her and minister to her. Um, sometimes people will come up and they're in a hurry, but you can tell they really want prayer. So I'll say, well, I'll walk with you as you go and, and I'll pray for you as you go up to the door. And so they're, they're okay with that because they're in a hurry. But what often happens is they wind up stopping anyway. And before they go in, they are they just express such gratitude. So they really needed it. They, they really needed the encouragement of having someone care about them and support them through prayer. Um, and sometimes they'll come out and they'll tell us, it went great, I'm so happy, thank you for praying. Oh, there was, there was another right. guy, Sonny. Yeah, Sonny, I've seen four times now. The first time I saw Sonny, he uh, reeked of alcohol. He asked me to pray for him 
for a home because he was homeless at the time. And he was so sweet. So I asked him if I could pray for him to be free of the addiction to alcohol as well. And he was totally open to that. So I prayed for him. And that was that, that one, the first time. The second time I saw him, um, he was just so grateful he'd found a place to live, but he still reeked of alcohol. So I prayed for him again about the alcohol addiction. The third time I saw him, he still reeked of alcohol. I prayed for him again. The fourth time was very recent and he was so happy to see me and he did not reek of alcohol. Wow. So th this is morning. These are all mornings. Wow. He's already been, been drunk by morning time. And this fourth time, I didn't smell trace of alcohol. So I was really happy about that. That's amazing, Katie. I love that. I love as well what you were saying a moment ago where you kind of don't take their first uh, refusal in, in a way, you know, obviously do it very gently. But, oh, well, I'm too busy. Why don't I walk with you? And I think that there is so even the, your story, if that lady had said, well, Katie came along for the first time and it wasn't for her. Right. So I'm just going to leave her to it. Actually, we, we often need another nudge, don't we? Another yeah. just yes. a gentle um, second. And I think sometimes when people's walls are up, it's almost an instinctive response. They're not even thinking it through, but they just, you know, they almost um, lock up and they push you away. But then if you just go again gently, it can sometimes lead to people opening that door that they thought they wanted yeah. to close. And actually, there was a part of them that did want to be prayed for right. and, and did want to be invited again. So I think there's a, there's a really important lesson there because I think so many people get put off by someone's first response. But it's often, I think, a bit of a defense mechanism yeah. where people kind of just shut shut themselves away, but actually that's not really what their heart wants or, or thinks or desires. It's, it's almost getting through some of that initial skin, isn't it? Yeah. 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 There are even people that this just happened yesterday, people that you approach, you ask them if they, if we can pray for them and they say no and they walk away and then you turn around and came back. And that happens quite often. <laughs> you wow. had a chance to think about this. Well, yeah, you know, I really do need <laughs> prayer. I love that. Yeah. Have you got any other any other stories you want to share, Katie? Ah, uh, let's see. Uh, I'm looking over my cheat sheet. <laughs> um, okay, there was another woman. She had a court date. Um, I prayed for her before she went in. When she came out, she came asking for more prayer. So um, I w she told me that she had had been in a very dark place and she just needed some encouragement. Um, there was a these are the ones that I'm excited about um, a little bit more because I really want to grow in healing people. Uh, not me, but, you know, laying hands on the sick and having them healed. <laughs> but there was a woman, I saw her being um, come up with a friend, but she was in a motorized wheelchair, a very specialized wheelchair because she was completely paralyzed from the neck down. Wow. Um, she had been in a car accident and I'm just so excited to have the opportunity to pray for people like that. I haven't seen anybody healed on the spot. Perhaps it, it was a progressive healing. I don't know, but I'm not going to give up because it's in the Bible. The Bible says we can do these things. So wow. I'm looking forward to that. And, and whenever I, I see that. somebody I with something wrong with them, what's going on? Can I pray for you? Yeah. Come on. I love that. And I think, Katie, for some people that they would feel they would feel put off or discouraged by praying for someone for healing where they think, well, it didn't happen. Um, but you don't seem to have that mentality or or that thought. So what what do you think is different for yourself in the way that you approach it or think about it? Because I think that puts off a lot of people of coming and knocking at that door and asking God for healing because they're almost fearful. Well, I did this once and it never happened. So what does, um, what keeps you thinking, I'm going to pray again? Well, honestly, I used to be that person that w w hesitated to pray for healing for people because I had that, but what if it doesn't happen? So it kept me from doing it. But since then I studied the subject of healing. I've read books that encourage healing 
and I've just educated myself. So now I guess it just built my faith by reading about yeah, it and good. studying the, the scriptures about it and digging in. And it just built my faith so that I'm and, and I've heard of uh, testimonies of other people that that are walking in that, that they prayed for 100 people before they saw anything happen. So, you know, right. the Bible says that if we diligently seek him, he, he rewards us. Mm. So really I think good. that there's some things he just wants us to dig in until we actually see it come about. Just to be persistent and not give up. And one of the things about this whole ministry that you've been involved with, Katie, is that uh, you obviously doing it before you came into our church, but then you started to just give an invitation to people in the church, people that you had relationship with or connection with, and other people started hearing about it and wanted to come along. But there's something for you that I think is is uh, is that gift of evangelism, where it's not just about you delivering the prayer and and running and oh well i enjoy it so i'm just going to go out and do this but you want to multiply it you want to train others you want to increase their faith and and get them more confident in stepping out to a stranger and offering to pray for them yeah what is it do you think that kind of motivates you to not just go as an individual but to start multiplying that and bringing other people with you because I know you've been messaging me these last few weeks saying, Josh, I want to do Saturdays as well. And we're going to do evangelism, street evangelism in downtown Raleigh. It's like, it's you know, for you, even though you love doing courtside ministry, it's like there's more. And so yeah. you come back and you say, right, how, how am I going to increase this? Well, I want to encourage the next generation. It's like Pastor Gary talked about to our academy group about thinking generationally. Mm. And this is part of it. I don't want to grow old and, and it ends because there's nobody else. It's not about me. It's, it's about um, encouraging others that have a call in their lives to evangelism and giving them the opportunity. That's why I want to do it on weekends also, because some people work during the week and can't get out there, but they have a call on their lives for that. And they want to do it. Um, so I want to give them the opportunity. I want to get them used to it. I want the, them to see how easy it is and to just uh, get to that comfortable place where it's just natural for them to go out there and pray so that, I mean, you can go into the grocery store, go up to the cashier and say, is there anything I can pray for you? Anywhere you are, you can do that. And it's people are just so responsive to that. Yeah. So there's That's a lot of people out there that we need to get into the kingdom and I can't do it by myself. <laughs> but it's another plug for Freedom Church because I've never had a response like this in any other church where they're so eager to jump in. Wow. Yeah. You're raising up That's some awesome. strong followers. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. And they're hungry to see God's kingdom come. Yeah. And Katie, for yourself, where where you're thinking as well about someone who might be listening to this in a, one of our other churches around the world. And they're thinking, I feel inspired. I want to do something like this. What would you do? What would you say to that person that wants to step out and pray for someone for the first time or, to, you know, as a stranger or to um, to start doing more evangelism to people in the street? What is there any kind of thoughts that you would want to almost share with people as we as we close up? Um, find someone to do it with. Mm, it's really yeah. good yeah um don't don't try to do it by yourself um you know jesus sent them out two by two for a good reason so um find a partner and step out and do it just you know be, be a very prayerful person spend enough time in the scriptures get to know who jesus is and how he operated and and learn about the kingdom and um yeah, just do all the things you need to be to be that son or daughter of Jesus and or of God and just do it. It's, it's not simple, hard. It? it is not it's taking hard. taking those steps and just putting yourself in a position where, right, we're going to do it. We're going to go and we're going to go and uh, believe for this together. Yeah. I, I think one of the things that's striking to me as well, Katie, is that a lot of people who would never see themselves in church and maybe would say that they don't believe in God. 
they will pray. It's actually one of the most natural things for people to do in the world. You can have yeah. people who uh, have never set foot in a church community, who have never opened the Bible, but maybe they're walking to the, to the steps of the courthouse or maybe they're going through something in their life at that time and they will, in their desperation, yeah. they will pray and they will do something that is instinctive. It's that seed within them. And I think it's trusting and believing that, that that is human nature, mm -hmm. that we've been made in God's image, that that seed is within us. And so actually there's more people that are going to be receptive to this than you think. Yes. Maybe they're never going to step foot in, a, in church or they haven't to this point, mm -hmm. but they, they may have prayed before. It's, it's, there's a likelihood that they may have just uttered at some point in their lives some kind of prayer and that yes. there's an openness to that yes yeah definitely well katie it's been so great having you on thanks so much for coming on the freedom podcast i'm so grateful that you are one of our freedom people because so you I. help us reach people uh and also multiply what god's given you to others and so it's so great to hear your testimony today and hopefully that's going to inspire a load of other people yes. around freedom church thanks so much katie and thanks for listening today and we'll see you soon for the next freedom podcast <laughs>